By the 1850s, Americans had begun to measure progress in miles of track laid. Southern states were building railroads faster than Germany, France, or England. Cotton financed the railroads of the South. It purchased the African Americans who became laborers and cargo for the Iron Road. When the cars began to start and the conductor cried out, the colored people cried out with one voice as though the heavens and earth were coming together. As the cars moved away, we heard the weeping and wailing from the slaves as far as human voice could be heard. And from that time to the present, I have neither seen nor heard from my two sisters, nor any of those who left clocks and depot on that memorable day. Jacob Stroyer. In 1854, America was poised to build a railroad across the continent, west through the Kansas Territory. Whether that railroad would pass through a Kansas free state or a Kansas slave state was a question Americans north and south were now ready to settle with blood. The Kansas-Nebraska bill passed by Congress declared that whoever settled Kansas could choose slavery or freedom for the new state. To a lot of northerners, their conception of the future of the West was held together by this geographical guarantee that slavery could never exist above the 3630 parallel. The Kansas-Nebraska Act now in 1854 erases that 34-year-old vow, which had the sanction of the Constitution. It now meant that the settlement of this vast territory of the West and the Northwest was open to slavery. It was open to the possibility of three, four, five, six, eight new slave states. From northern states, thousands of pioneers set out to settle Kansas. The New England Immigrant Aid Company financed the settlement of entire villages. In Brooklyn, New York, abolitionist preacher Henry Ward Beecher raised funds to give rifles to the free soil settlers. From Missouri, Georgia, and other southern states, white settlers came to Kansas armed to the teeth for the slavery cause. If Kansas is not made a slave state, it requires no sage to tell that without some very extraordinary revolution, there will never be another slave state. The Sovereign Squad a newspaper Kansas, 1856. But most Northerners who came to the Plains did not want to end slavery nationwide. They simply did not want to compete with it in Kansas. And they didn't want to work alongside black people, slave or free. Their movement was called Free Soil. Free Soil meant free states for free white men. Is the future of America going to be America as white man's country or America as a country in which there are multiple races? One of the ways you can ensure that America is in the future white man's country is to make sure that that West was as white as possible, as free as possible from blacks whether these blacks were slave or whether these blacks were free. Settlers who only came hoping to build farms discovered they were homesteading a battlefield. Two opposing territorial governments emerged on the plains, one pro-slavery, the other free soil. Each government outlawed the other, and both pushed to exclude free African Americans. Cousin Sidney, we heard that five men had been killed by free state men. The men were butchered, ears cut off, and bodies thrown into the river. The murdered men, pro-slavery, had thrown out threats and insults. Yet the act was barbarous and inhuman, whoever committed by. 
Since yesterday, I have learned that those who committed the murders were a party of Browns. The war seems to have commenced in real earnest. Edward Bridgman. In 1856, a raiding party led by John Brown and his sons avenged the burning of the free soil town of Lawrence with the blood of five pro-slavery men. At age 56, Brown was one of the few white men who didn't want an all-white Kansas. He was a fiery abolitionist who hated slavery, believing, as one acquaintance put it, that he was made by God to break the jawbone of slaveholders. As white men killed white men in bleeding Kansas, David Walker's prophecy of an American apocalypse seemed close at hand. 